Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes. And in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 4 to 7 that says concatenated words. So here we are given one array of string words uh, without duplicates and we need to return all, concreted, all concatenated words. So the definition of this concatenated word is any string that is comprised entirely of at least two shorter words in the given array. Okay, so uh, if let's say this string cats, uh, cats, dog, cats. So this string of is is made up of three different words, as you can see here, cats, dog, and again cats. So we can say that this is one concatenated word. Now, if we talk about this word only cats, then there is no two words like cat and s or ca and ts in this input of words. If there would be two words like ca and ts, then we can say cats is also a concatenated word. It it must because it must have at least two shorter words and. Uh, and it should be compressed entirely of that uh, two or more shorter words. Got it? So as you take a look at here, that cats and dogs is one example. Then dog cat dog dot dog cats dog is another example because this term, this input is dog as well as cats as well as dog. Okay. And another is uh, yeah rat cat dog cat. See we also have rat and dog and cat is we also have. So that's uh, that's uh, how we uh, found three concatenated word from this input. Got it? Now take a look at this uh, test case. We have cat dog, so it is comprised of cat and dog. So that is our answer. Okay. So I hope you guys understood the question. Now uh, following an intuition for this is see. Uh, let's let's say this is the given example. Now for any given word, let's say you are trying for word cat. What we will do, we will check either a, we have possibilities like uh, C comma A comma T are these three different words or C A and T are if these two are are defined words or C comma A T is a defined word. So these are different possibilities and if let's say we have any of the possibility match means let's say C A and T that would be a, a, another word in these like C A and T. Then we can also say that this cat is a concatenated word. Got it? So that's, that's how we will check by taking a substring of each word and we will check if that substring is present in this given words or not. If it is present, then we would uh, check for another substring of the remaining part of this word. So I hope you guys are uh, deriving the intuition of how we will do this. That by check checking uh, for each substring of different length of a given word. Got it? Let's say for a, this, let's say if C is not a present here, then we would try for CA. The, is CA is present in this? No. Then we would try for C8. If is C8 is present in this, see, we won't check for this. Means we would, uh, while checking, we would remove the original word, got it from uh, the words. We would remove that. Okay, is C8 is present? No. So that's why we would return false. No, or it is not possible to make this word by concatenation of two words. So that's how we will do. Let me take one another example to let you show you better. Let me take dog, cats and dog. So let's say I tried uh, by checking let's say initially D. Is D is present? No. Then I took DO. Is DO present in this uh, array? No. Then I try DOG. Is DOG present? Yeah. DOG is present. Okay. I got one answer. Then here I tried for C. Is C present as a word? No. CA. No, CAT, yes, okay, CAT is present, okay. Now I tried for this, S is present, no, D present, no, O, S, D, O, G present, no. So here it is false, okay. Then I again tried for dog, let's say for dog, then I tried for cats. So it's cats present, yeah, dog present, yeah, and the remaining dog present, yes, okay. So that's how I will try to solve this question, got it? By taking different possible substrings at different uh, at different uh, indexes okay so uh, uh, so based on this you will have data that what we would do we would try to do a recursive function yeah similarly to a dfs uh, call that we make so we will try to do a recursive function and also we would store all this in an unordered map you for better time complexity unordered map is map uh, only takes big of, big of n time complexity so our approach would be to use unordered map to store all this possible string uh, it would be of string int and then we would traverse uh, we would make a dfs call 
uh, for our each word starting from zero and div, and we will try to form different possible substring. If a substring is possible, then we check for next substring, and then for the end. And if we reach the end, and uh, all the above sub substring are possible, then we would return true. Else, we would return false. If we would return true, then uh, if at any point we got our answer as true, then yeah, we will stop and we would return. We would add this to our answer. Simple. So is now do you feel this question as a hard question? I think you must not feel this as a hard question. This is a simple question. Like if you do would know DFS or recursion, then it's uh, easy for you to solve this because we are just doing that, making trying to make different possible substring. This is like a choice diagram where we have choice to include this as a substring or like uh, this as a substring. So yeah, uh, that's all for the approach part. Uh, now let's move on to the coding part where we will see how we will code this function. So guys, now let us try to code our approach. So let me first initialize one unordered map of string and int. Let me name it as m, m for map. Now let us traverse for the, all the string in this words item. And we would simply uh, add the frequency of those, those words in our map. Now again, what we would do, we would traverse for this words item. Okay, now before that, let me also initialize one answer variable vector string of answer where we could store, store our answer. And uh, before calling a DFS function, what we would do, we would simply make m of s minus minus. So we just remove the frequency of the current word uh, from the map so that uh, we won't uh, count it as a substring. Yeah. And uh, now, if uh, the DFS call where we would pass the current word and the unordered map m and the index 0. And if this returns true, then uh, we would do answer dot pushback, and we would push the string s. And uh, remember again to increment the frequency of the word. And here we would return answer. Now let us try to code this function, a boolean function, bool dfs string uh, s unordered map of string int, and let me name it as m and one index to store the index now if index equal equal to s dot size then we would return true see i would i would uh, uh i would explain you why we i am directly returning true here but before that let me take one uh stamp string where we would store all the substring from and we would travel from index up till s dot size And what we would check if u of temp so but before that we would push some of the character the character the current character s of i in this temp and if u of temp is greater than zero that means we have that substring and then we will and then we will call this dfs function again on the remaining string that is from uh, i plus one okay and for the i plus one that is remaining string we will again call this function and this returns true and this is also greater than zero and here only we would return true right so that means if we have reached the end of the header, that means that we, uh, this also DFS call would be also written true. So if we encounter any of this condition, then we will simply return true, right? Because all the substring uh, before this end of the header are the valid substring. Yeah. And in the end, we will return false. If none of the condition is satisfied, then we will return false. Now let me try to run this. Okay, you sorry, it's not you, it's M M for unordered map. Okay, what's the error still unexpected? Okay, there would be a comma here. So yeah, the test cases are passed. Now let me try to submit this. Okay, yes, so our code got accepted. So I hope you guys understood the question, the approach as well as the code for it. Not talking about the time complexity. See, here we are running this loop for uh, n times that n is the size of this size of this words a uh, vector. That is the total number of words here. And for each uh, 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 word in this words, we are calling a DFS function. So here, let's see here uh, the size of the total number of words. Total number of words is let's say n and uh, size of word 
is let's say m then to find all the possible substring of this word is okay now uh, so we if this word of us is of a size m then to generate all the possible substring would what would be the time complexity that would be your time complexity of n cube if you know the how we can if we know the complexity of generating a substring then that is m cube of a uh, word of a size of m so our, our total time complexity would be n into m cube correct and total space complexity would be n into m i guess yeah this is only the this only would be the same space complexity yes because uh, uh, for all the uh, m uh, n number of words we are storing it into our unordered map and then we are storing uh, uh, some uh, substring in the temp of size m so this would be our space complexity so i hope you guys understood the intuition behind this question and also the approach so that's all for this video make sure you like this video subscribe to our channel and also note one thing that i am sharing the job opportunities in the community section do check that out uh, on a regular basis and also hit the notification bell to, to get the notification whenever i share something so that you won't miss out miss something so that's all for this video uh, make sure you subscribe the channel if you haven't and like this video thank